Tasha, thank you very, very much. You're a lifesaver. We just need to sort this out for tomorrow's meeting. Yeah, I think um, this link can be used for all three days. So um, I'll okay. go to announcement and delete the previous link. If, and it's also under announcement, it states that this link is for tonight, tomorrow and the 6th. Okay, perfect. Thank you very, very much. Much appreciated. Okay, guys, so you can see, you can see the whiteboard. Is that right? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay, so we're busy with financial records. You will remember I said to you that on the one side, you've got your trust financial records. And on the other side, yes, you've sir. Got, you can see your business financial records. So you've got trust financial records and business financial records. You never mix the two except the... There is only one exclusion, and that is where you transfer money from trust to business or business to trust. Forget about that now. So whenever you get a transaction, for example, client pays 100000 as a deposit for his divorce case. Do you guys need me to switch off my camera, or is it fine? It's fine. No, it's fine. Okay, perfect. So let's say, for example, you get a hundred thousand rand deposit from a client, and that is in respect of his divorce case. So you must still execute the mandate of the client. So you always start here at the beginning. Then you ask yourself, is this trust related? Yes, it's trust related because the client is paying a deposit. He's paying a deposit for his divorce case, or he's paying a deposit for the purchase of a property, or he's paying the full purchase price, or you're collecting money from a debtor and the debtor pays the client, but you're receiving the money on behalf of the client. So it's not your money, it's trust money. All that money must go into your trust bank account. So you know then what will be the financial records I will be working with. It will be trust. So you go to your trust financial records. When you get to your trust financial records, you've got two options. You see there, it's like a T-junction in the road. You need to make a decision. Is this a cash transaction or is this a non-cash transaction? Is it cash or non-cash? If it's a cash transaction, there's a flow of money. Money is flowing into the bank account, out of the bank account. Then it's a cash transaction. Then your book of prime entry, first entry, will be the trust cash book. You've got no other alternative. When you've got money flowing into the trust bank account, remember now I said, when you open your practice, you there will be two bank accounts, one trust, one business. So money is flowing. If money is flowing into the trust bank account where a client made a payment, then you use your trust cash book for the entry. If money is flowing out of the bank account, you use your trust cash book as the book of prime entry. For all other transactions, non-cash, no flow of money, no money is moving, no money is flowing into the bank account, no money is flowing out of the bank account, then it's a non-cash transaction and then you will use your journal and this journal is your trust journal for all non-cash transactions. Okay, let's go back to the easier one, the cash transactions. Money is flowing into the bank account, out of the bank account. I know that I'm going to use my cash book and it is my trust cash book because it relates to trust money and the money is actually flowing into the trust bank account. 
So you are keeping record of the flow of money into the bank account and out of the bank account. The bank is also keeping record of inflows and outflows, but that's the bank's record. And we refer to that record as a bank statement. So there at the bank, at FNB, we're banking with FNB. Remember we said we're opening two bank accounts, a business and a trust. FNB is also keeping record of what's happening. But our record that we are keeping is a mirror image. When you look in the mirror, it is a reflection. It's the opposite that you see. So you've all got your own bank accounts. If you look at your bank statement, now it's not your bank statement, the bank's statement of what happened. If you receive your salary, it goes in as a credit. And when MTN, takes money for your cell phone, it's recorded as a debit on the bank's statement. The bank's statement is not your record. Your record is your cash book. You are going to show flow of money, ins and outs, inflows, outflows. Okay, but it's a mirror image. So don't get confused. Don't think that an inflow into the bank account is a credit. It's not. In your record called a cash book, and in this example, it's the trust cash book. It is in a T format. We call it the trust cash book. It's in a T format. And we are going to record on the debit side, that's the left-hand side, as the plus side and the credit side, the minus side. This is the inflow side. Sometimes I refer to this as the happy side. Why? It's making me happy when I get money. Money is flowing to me, towards me. That's making me happy. That's your debit side. It's the opposite of the bank statement. The bank is also keeping record, but they're doing it in an opposite manner. So they credit your bank statement with the inflows. But in our records, we debit the inflows. And the outflows also referred to as the sad side. Money is flowing away. When money is flowing away from us, we record on the credit side of the cash book. So inflows always, when you, money is coming to the trust account, it's flowing into, although it's not your money, it's your client's money. So it's not your money, but it's still flowing in. So when you receive that deposit for the divorce case, when you receive the deposit from the client to set up a trust, when you receive a deposit from a client to register a company, when you receive an instruction from a client to appear in a criminal case and you must go and uh, appear in a bail application and you ask for a deposit, money is flowing to you. When a client pays a purchase price or a deposit in respect of a purchase price, it's trust money, it's flowing in. Or if a client, uh, if you collect a debt from a debtor and the debtor pays the client, it's the client's money. So we are entrusted with other people's money. And that is why we got a section 86, subsection 2 bank account, also referred to as a trust bank account with a financial institution. Forget about the business bank account. We are going to get to the business bank account. But all money that you are entrusted with on behalf of clients, that will be trust money. And that money must go into that separate bank account re referred to as a trust bank account. It's your trust bank account. Okay, so, and when the money flows, you've got a T account. The inflows always as debits, the outflows as credits. When will there be an outflow, a sad situation? 
When the money is flowing away, it's flowing out of the bank account. That's where the client instructs you, pay over 10,000 Rand to Mr. A, or pay my advocate's account, or pay the sheriff for the service of the summons in my divorce case, or pay maintenance in my divorce case to my spouse or to my spouse's legal representative. Anything you pay on behalf of a client and on the instructions of a client, you cannot decide what you want to pay. It's not your decision. You must get proper instructions from your client before you spend their money. If I've got your money, I cannot spend that money without your instructions. Then I'm just keeping the money here with me until you tell me, go and buy something. Go and buy me shoes. Go and pay my water and lights. You understand? So it is the same with us. We are entrusted with people's money and we can only pay if we are instructed to do so. That is the outflows of the trust bank account. So now when you've got to pay, I said this, you need to always ask two questions. In the exam also, if it's stated in exam, pay the advocate's account, pay the sheriff for the service of the summons, pay a tracer for obtaining an address of the defendant. Whenever you've got to pay or pay the purchase price to the seller, whenever you've got to pay, you need to ask two questions. Question one, is there money available? There must always be trust money available for that specific client. You cannot use another client's money to pay for the divorce case of Mr. Divorce. That will be unfair. I cannot use, I've got millions in my trust bank account, but the millions there, I can tell you whose money it is. I can say client A has got a million, client B has got half a million, client C has got 200,000. I must be able to tell you exactly how that, let's say 10 million in my trust account, how it's made up, whose money it is. And I cannot use other clients' money to pay for disbursements for another client. So I go and check that specific client's account and see if that client has got money available with me on trust. That's question one. Question two, why did the client pay in this money? What is the purpose of the money that I've received? Is this to pay a disbursement? For example, the sheriff. Yes, if it's yes, you must answer yes to both questions. Yes, I've got money. Yes, the client paid the money to cover disbursements. Only then you can pay out of trust. If you've got no money available, or if you've got money available, but it's not for that specific purpose, then you pay from your business account. And that, again, is a very sad situation because you are now funding disbursements on behalf of clients. So that is why it's so important when you get an instruction that you must ask the client to pay a deposit. Okay, so you've got all the inflows of money into the bank account as debits. You record it on the debit side and all outflows after you've asked the two questions, all the outflows as credits in the trust cash book. Okay. Now, I remember I said to you, in the principle of bookkeeping, a debit cannot stand on its own. For every debit, there must be a credit. And for every credit, there must be a corresponding debit entry. It's like a scale. When you put five kilograms of sugar on the one side of the scale, you must put five kilograms of sugar on the other side so the scale will always balance. So that's what you need to do. Your scale must balance. So if you put 5,000 Rand on the debit side, you must put 5,000 Rand on the credit side so the scale must balance. This is all in one entry. So for every entry, there's a debit and a corresponding credit. But if you work with a cash book as your book of prime entry, that I refer to as the N12 because most of our entries will go through the cash book, the trust cash book. It's the N12. The other one 
the non-cash transactions, the journal, you will not find that much entries in the journal. That is the N12. Not a lot of people using the N12 and stopping at Kimberley. They all go a Bloemfontein, N N1, N1. Okay, so most of your entries will go through the trust cash book as the book of prime entry. But there might be some entries that will be classified as non-cash transactions. So no flow of money in the bank account. Then I use the trust journal, because I'm still busy with my trust financial records. You see, uh, you keep it separate. Trust and business. You always keep it separate, trust and business. You've got your business financial records on the other table, so you forget about that now. Okay, so if you use your cash book, your trust cash book, as the one leg. And now you don't even need to think about it because we know the debits is the inflow, so we record the money. If we receive 100,000 from the client, you record the 100,000 in the trust cash book on the debit side. If the client pays you that 100,000 deposit for his divorce case. From the book of prime entry, the entry must be posted. So now we want to get to Cape Town. So first we stop in Bloemfontein, but now we're going to post this transaction to Cape Town. That's where we want to go. And that is referred to as our ledger. It's a ledger. The book of secondary entry is a ledger. And because we're busy with trust financial records, the book of secondary entry is a trust ledger. And inside the trust ledger, it's a book, you find the trust ledger accounts. So you understand how it works. First stop in your cash book, if it's a cash transaction, and then post to the ledger. Now, what you need to remember, if your cash book has got the debit leg, the ledger, it's going to be posted to the opposite side of the ledger, on the credit side. If the cash book has got the credit leg, you're going to post that entry to the opposite side of the ledger, the debit side. That's how you post to the ledger. The ledger is also in a T format where you've got the name of the ledger, the name of, and remember, this is a trust ledger account. And if you've got this 100,000, yeah, you see this 100,000 on the debit side of the trust cash book. Client, Mr. Divorce, paid us 100,000. It was flowing in to our trust bank account. That's why it's on the debit side. I'm posting it to the credit side of a trust ledger in the name of the client, and I post it to the credit side. X trust cash book. That refers to where you will find the other entry. You'll find the other entry in the trust cash book. Okay, if now later on, let's say you must now pay the sheriff a thousand rand for serving the summons. So it's a divorce case of Mr. Divorce. We've drafted the summons and the particulars of claim. We've issued the summons and we've attended to the sheriff's offices and we instructed the sheriff to serve the summons on the defendant. The sheriff is going to send you an account, let's say for a thousand rand for the service of the summons in this divorce case. Now, we need to pay the sheriff two questions. Is there money available for this client? You look at this client, Mr. Divorce, his trust ledger account. We look at Mr. Divorce and we see, oh, yes, he's got 100,000 available. So that you look at the credit side always of a client's trust ledger account. Because remember, you've posted all the payments. Every time he pays you, then you post it to his trust ledger. So that is a summary on the credit side of all the amounts that you've received from the client. So we received 100,000 from the client. So that's question one. Yes, 
we've got money available. Question two, what was the purpose of the 100,000 that was paid by the client, Mr. Divorce? That was specifically to cover us for disbursements. That's why we asked him to pay us because I don't want to, I don't want to pay a thousand rand to the sheriff from my business account in respect of his divorce case. That's why I asked for a deposit. So second question, yes, the purpose of the money is to pay for disbursements. Now, money is flowing. Money is flowing. Is it flowing in? No, it's not flowing into the bank account. It's sad. It's flowing away. I'm paying the sheriff. So I'm going to pay the sheriff from the trust account 1,000. So I'm going to log on to my internet banking and I'm going to choose my trust bank account. And that is the from account where the money must flow away. And I'm going to record the sheriff's details and I'm going to press enter and 1,000 Rand is going to flow to the sheriff. You're not opening a ledger for the sheriff. You are paying on behalf of a client. Who is the client? Mr. Divorce. I'm paying on behalf of Mr. Divorce. Okay, make sure you're on mute. Please, people, make sure you're on mute. I can hear you. Okay. Ceci, please put yourself on mute. Okay, so I'm checking and I'm seeing that I've got money and what was the purpose to cover for disbursements? So it's flowing out. So I'm paying the sheriff, but on whose behalf am I paying? Remember I said for every credit, it's the one leg. I must post that entry to the debit side. Who's T goes with T. So if the one leg is in a trust cash book, the other leg must also be trust. Trust ledger. Whose trust ledger? On whose behalf am I paying the sheriff? I'm paying on behalf of Mr. Divorce. So I'm going to post that entry to the debit side of Mr. Divorce's trust ledger account. And my description will be X trust cash book. So every time money flows into the trust bank account, you record on the debit side and you post to the credit side of the person who paid it or on whose behalf the money was paid. So your client. For your client, there will be a trust ledger account. All your clients, there will be trust ledger accounts in your trust ledger. And T goes with T. And if you pay something out of trust, you always record on the credit side of the trust cash book because the money is flowing away and you post to the debit side. And that's the way you record cash transactions. Are the money flowing into the bank account, trust bank account, or money flowing out of the trust bank account? Are they as a debit or a credit? Debit entries must be posted to the credit side of a ledger. Credit entries in the cash book must be posted to the debit side of the ledger. Okay. All other transactions, if it's not cash, you've got no flow. Money is not going anywhere. It's not going into the bank account. It's not going out of the bank account. So the balance in the bank account will not change. It's not becoming more or it's not becoming smaller, the balance. It stays exactly the same. Then I know it's a non-cash transaction. No flow of money in the bank account. Then I know I cannot use my cash book because my cash book, for, for me to be able to use my cash book, there must be a flow of money. But now there's no flow of money. So it means that I am going to use a journal. And the journal on the trust side, you've only got one journal on the trust side. And that is your trust journal. You've only got the one. And that is a trust journal. Now, a journal looks different from a cash book and a ledger. 
both the cash book and the ledger are in a T format. But a journal looks completely different. You've got in a journal the name of the journal. Now, this will be the trust journal. You've got a debit column and you've got a credit column. This is a journal. This is a journal. Do you see it looks completely different? It looks completely different, the journal. You've got the description, the name of the account that must be debited. So always debit entry first and then credit entry second. This is for all non-cash, no flow of money. Your bank account, it's, it's, it's standing still. It's got no movement there in the bank account, the trust bank account. Then I'm using my trust journal. So first you can record the name of the trust ledger account that must be debited and you record the amount in the debit column. Then you write the name of the trust ledger account that must be credited and you write the amount in the credit column and then you write the reason. Then you write the reason. Why am I doing this entry? Why am I affecting this journal entry? Why am I moving the money between the different clients, trust, ledger accounts? Or am I correcting a posting error? Did I made a mistake when I posted? Did I post to the wrong ledger and now I'm fixing my mistake? You need to write there the reason why you're using this journal. Now, what is very interesting when you look at a journal, it's got not just the one leg of the double entry as the cash book. You see the cash book has only got the one leg. The journal, the journal, if you look at the journal, it's got a debit and a credit entry. So it's, it's got both legs of the double entry in the journal. So that is why a journal is completely different. The way you record in a journal is completely different and it contains both the debit and the credit entries. And when you post, remember now, trust journal must be posted to trust ledger accounts. Trust cash book entries must be posted to trust ledger accounts. T must be posted to T. T in the journal must be posted to T. So if you look at the journal, you'll see both the entries must be TLA accounts, trust accounts, trust ledger accounts. You can never mix trust and business except for the trust transfer procedure, but forget about that now. So after this journal, the trust journal, that's your N12. So when you get to the T junction, yeah, on top, yeah, You've established it's trust related. When you get to the T junction, you must either decide is it a cash transaction or non cash. When you follow cash, you know how to record. If you follow non cash, then you know, okay, I must go to my journal. Which journal? It's the trust journal. It's the only option. I'm going to record debit first, credit second, and Carabo, I'm going to be with you now. And from the journal, you are going to post the entries to the book of secondary entry that will be your trust ledger accounts. And the way that you post it, this is like baking a cake. It's like a recipe. It says, take one cup of flour and put it in the bowl. You do exactly as you are told. Go to that specific trust ledger on the debit side and record this amount. Then go to that specific trust ledger account to the credit side and record the amount. So now you're not posting to the opposite side. You post exactly how it is recorded in the journal. So that is another um, difference from the cash book. The cash book has got one entry and you post to the opposite side. A journal contains both entries and you post it exactly how it was recorded in the journal. Yes, Karabu. 
Um, sorry, sir. Um, I had a bit of a blackout session where my network disappeared. Even now, currently, like the video is frozen on my side. So when yes. I re-logged in, um, the last thing I saw or what wasn't here on the screen was the trust journal and the 100,000 for the sheriff. So I just wanted to check if either the recording is going to be made available and if it's possible, if you can just have a little quick run through on what I missed out as possible. Okay. I don't know if we are recording these sessions. Hopefully I can't see. Yes, it's being recorded. The, the session is being recorded. I presume that um, Tasha is assisting us with that, with the recording of the session. And I think you can just ask her to make it available. Um, we've lost a lot of time already um, with the issue of the sharing. So I don't want to go back now and re-explain everything. So if that is fine with you, will you just get a copy of the recording and then you can just follow and make sure. If you don't understand, tomorrow evening you can just ask me. Mr. Myra. All right, no problem. Thank you. Yes. Uh, we all we we did record the first session as well on the other link and this one and we will put it on the e-leader platform. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Okay, Karabu, are you fine? Yes, I am. Thank you very much. Okay. You can just lower your hand now. Thank you. Okay, so you understand the difference between the two. The one is cash flowing in or out of the bank account. The other one is non-cash, so no flow of money. So that means that you are going to use a journal and on your trust side, you've only got one option and that is your trust journal. And then you record in the trust journal as the book of prime entry, not the cash book. You can't record in a journal and the cash book. You must make a decision. Is it cash or is it non-cash? And if it's cash, it's cash book and you post to the opposite side. If it's non-cash, it's journal, trust journal, you record both debit and credit and you post exactly how it's been recorded in the journal. Let's go over to business financial records. Okay, now in the exam, if it's stated that you pay your office rent, you pay salaries, you buy stationery, obviously you can hear that it is business related. I cannot pay. I would wish to pay my office rent from the trust account. No, you cannot. If you do that, you are definitely going to get struck off the roll and you're going to serve some time for theft or mismanagement of trust funds. You're not allowed to do that. I cannot touch the trust money. There is only one way that I can get my hands on trust money, and that is legitimately, and that I'm going to explain to you later. But for now, whenever it's a business transaction. So in the exam, if you've got a one first question, uh, first entry, Mr. Divorce pays a 100,000 deposit in respect of his divorce case. It's trust. I go to my trust financial records. I follow the line. I make a decision, is it cash or non-cash? It's cash, I do what I need to do. If it's non-cash, I do what I need to do. But the next part of the question, you buy a computer from Incredible Connections and you pay 20,000 Rand for the computer. Okay, I cannot buy a computer from the trust account. That is a business-related transaction. So immediately, yeah, on top, must I go trust or business? I know I must go business. I pay my salaries. I buy stationery. I entertain my clients. I pay one of my creditors, my business creditors. That will all be business-related. Whenever you go and you look, or remember, 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 where you've got to pay something on behalf of a client. Can you recall I said where I must pay the sheriff, but the client did not pay me a deposit. I checked and I, I saw, oh, no money on trust. Then you pay from business. Then again, you go to the business side, your business financial records. Then everything is going to happen on the business side. 
All the entries must be on the business side, not the trust side. Then you forget about the trust financial records. You're not working with the trust financial records. Then you go to the business side. When you get to your business side, your business financial records, you remember I started to say you've got two tables in your office. You've got a table with all the trust financial records. That is your trust cash book, your trust journal as the two books of prime entry. And further down the line, you've got the trust ledger. On the other side of the room, you've got another table. There you've got your business financial records. You move to that table because there's where you are going to record in your business financial records. Okay, so again, when we get to the business side, our business financial records, when you stand there in front of that table, you are going to see different books on that table. The first book you will see will be A business cash book. A business cash book. Remember now, you've got two bank accounts. You've got a trust bank account and a business bank account. You've got a trust bank account and a business bank account. Now, the same principle applies. If money is flowing into your business account, now listen to me, listen very clearly, because this you need to understand. Remember I said to you, when a client pays you a deposit, I'm still work, 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 and then I, I can take some of that money, the trust money, but it is a payment in advance. The client is giving me a deposit. It's in advance. Mr. Lawyer, he has 100,000. Please be quick with this divorce case. I need to get divorced very urgently. Okay, so I'm paying you 100. The 100 is trust money. What happens? Please keep this in mind. What happens if you execute the mandate? The client did not pay you. The client did not pay you a deposit. You've been doing business with this client for 10 years already. He wants to get divorced from his spouse and you start divorce proceedings. You issue the summons. You issue the summons and you render the service and you render your statement of account or you send an invoice for work already executed. If the client now pays you, after you've executed the work. That payment by the client is business money. You are going to provide the client with your business bank account and the client is going to pay the money directly into your business bank account. You're not going to treat that payment as trust money. It's business money because you already worked for the client and you've already rendered your account, or you've already paid a disbursement, let's say you've paid the sheriff from your business account, and you've debited your fees, the client owes you 10,000 rand, if the client now pays you the 10,000 rand, that's business money, because he's paying your statement of account, or your invoice, you've rendered the invoice, you've rendered the statement, he's paying it, that's business money, not trust money. Trust money is an advanced deposit. Yes, Lazar. Yes. My apology, my apology. No, it's fine. Ask me. Sorry, I didn't have a question. I don't know what oh, I did. Okay, okay, okay. not I'm a so problem. Sorry. Not a problem, not a problem. Okay, so if you on your business side, and there's a cash transaction, flow of money in or out of the business bank account. You use your business cash book. It's also in a T format. The debit side is again the plus side and the credit side, the minus side. So all the inflows of money. Inflows of money will be recorded on the debit side 
and all the outflows of money out of the business bank account will be recorded on the credit side of your business cash book. Now again, this is only the one leg of the double entry. This is only the one leg. So you need to post this entry. You need to post this entry to the opposite side. But this time we are busy with business financial records. So I cannot post this to a trust ledger account. It's a business ledger account. So all business cash book entries must be posted to the opposite side of a business ledger account. B goes with B. B goes with B. So if I've got a debit business cash book entry, I post it to the credit side of a business ledger account. And if I've got a credit cash book entry, business cash book entry, I post it to the debit side of a business ledger account. So now you stay with business. Yes, num, is it Namla? Num, Namla? Uh, thank you, Mr. May. Yes. I'm a bit confused. Can you please give me an example of a non cash transaction? In respect of trust or in respect of business? Uh, in respect of trust. Okay. A non-cash transaction in respect of trust will be, you remember I said, it's where you fix a posting error, but forget about that now. I said it's where you move money between clients' trust ledger accounts. That will be a very good example is in respect of a property transaction. Mr. Purchaser is buying the property from Mr. Seller. Okay. Yes. You understand? And he's yes. buying it for a million rand. Mr. Purchaser is not financing it through a bank. He paid the million rand, Mr. Purchaser. You received the million rand. But remember, it's Mr. Purchaser's money. It stays his money up to date of registration when the property is registered in his name. So it's because yeah. anything can still go wrong. Mr. Seller can cancel the deal or Mr. Purchaser can cancel the deal. Then they must, then Mr. Purchaser must get his money back. But delivery, you know, contract law, we, when you deliver, I deliver the money. You know how it works. If I buy your car, you give me the car, I give you, or let's say I buy your cell phone. You give me the cell phone, immediately I give you 5,000 Rand when I buy the cell phone. With the immovable property, delivery takes place in the deeds office. So Mr. Purchaser on date of registration becomes the new owner of the property, the immovable property, and Mr. Seller must get his money. So Mr. Purchaser paid in the million Rand 12 weeks ago into our trust bank account. You got that. So you yes. see there at FNB, there's a million rand in the trust bank account. But now yes. it's date of registration. That million rand, Mr. Purchaser became now the owner of the house. So that yes. million rand that's in his trust ledger account must move to the seller's trust ledger. Now it's not Mr. Purchaser's money anymore. It's Mr. Seller's money. You understand? But yes. no money is going to flow. I'm not taking out a million rand out of the bank account and put it straight back again. That's stupid. You understand? I'm not yes. taking it out and putting it back again. Because remember, I must still pay the estate agent on behalf of Mr. Seller. So I still got stuff to pay out of the million rand before I can give the balance to the seller. So that is why I'm just moving in my financial records. I'm just showing that the million rand is flowing away out of Mr. Purchase's trust ledger, flowing into Mr. Seller's trust ledger. That is an example of a non-cash transaction where you work with two trust ledger accounts and where you use a trust journal. Does it make sense? So the money is not physically flowing in the bank. The money stays in the bank, the million. 
but I'm moving the money between the two clients in my financial records. That is an example of a non-cash transaction in respect of the trust financial records. Another good example, one that I always use to explain. Mr. Divorce and Mr. Seller. Mr. Seller sold his property and he got 5 million rand for the sale of his property. This money is still with the lawyer. But he's every evening, Mr. Divorce is drinking with Mr. Seller at the bar. They drink at the bar and they've got all these discussions. And now Mr. Divorce's marriage is on the rocks. And Mr. Divorce comes to see us and we ask for a deposit of 100,000 Rand before we start with his divorce case. Mr. Divorce, he hasn't got 100,000. But because he's such good friends with Mr. Seller, he approached Mr. Seller and he said to Mr. Seller, can you not give me a loan for 100,000? I urgently need to get divorced. I need 100,000 to give to the lawyer. Then Mr. Seller has got 5 million in your bank account, your trust bank account. The next morning, he phones you and he tells you, move 100,000 of my available 5,000 rand to my friend, Mr. Divorce, as a deposit for his divorce case. So he's got 5, 5 million with you already, but we're going to move that money. So we're not taking out 100,000 out of the trust bank account, pay it to Mr. Divorce, and then Mr. Divorce pays it back to us into the trust bank account. That's not how it works. The 5 million stays in the bank account, but in our financial records, we take out 100,000 from Mr. Seller's trust ledger. So we had 5 million, now it's 4.9 million that he's got left with us. And we move that 100,000 into Mr. Divorce's trust ledger. So I'm working with two trust ledger accounts. And how will I move that money between the two people, the two clients? I will use a trust journal. It's a non-cash transaction. Okay, are you happy? Uh, okay, I, I hear you. Yeah. The main question you need to ask yourself, is money moving in the bank account? In this scenario, just think to yourself, in this scenario where one client has got 5 million and he's going to um, enter into a loan agreement with another client, how will you move the money? Just think logically. How will you move the money? You okay. understand? And then when do you get to do, uh, on, talking about what you, your, the example that you're using, how will you get to a point of saying it's a cash transaction because this person has loaned me 100000 when will you record it as a test transaction? Because at some point I should think it will be money moving, like physically moving from one bank account to another. But we, whose bank account, to whose bank account will the money move? From, from the trust of, of the person who's loaning to the trust of the one who's... But you've only got two bank accounts. You've only got, remember, this is our financial records. It's our financial records. We are keeping record of money that we've received on behalf of clients. Do you understand? It's our financial records. Yes. And we've only got two bank accounts. That's it. The we've business. And the yes, we've got two bank accounts. So money can only physically move from one, you say, one account to another account. So the only time that we can actually move money is from trust to business or business to trust. 
and this is not happening. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Now I get you now. I get what you okay. We can only my head is, the thing is my head has got trust journal for each trust account for each client as a bank account. Okay. No, it's not a bank account. We've only got one bank account. We don't open separate bank accounts for the clients. There's one bank account with one number, and there's another one with another number, and the one is business, the one is trust. The only time you can move something, remember, I'm not moving money from a bank account to another bank account. I'm moving the money in their ledgers to show whose money is what now. Yeah, that's why I'm saying that my head has been saying ledgers yes. a bank account for each client. No, that's why I'm. Not. Yes, but you're with me now. You with me? Yeah, I, I've only got I two guess. bank accounts. If money must flow, it can only flow between the two. From the, okay. From the cash book, trust cash book yeah. in the business. Yes. Cash book. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. I get okay. you now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. May. Okay. Now we're busy with our business financial records. We're busy with our business financial records. So on the business side, if the money is flowing into the bank account, business bank account. It is a debit entry in the business cash book and you post to the opposite side of a business ledger, B with B. And if it's going out of the bank account, we're paying salaries, for example. So money is flowing away. It's sad. It's flowing away. It's credit. Then we post to the ledger called salaries to show that we've paid salaries and we post to the opposite side. But also... On the business side, we've got non-cash transactions. On the business side, we've got non-cash transactions. Now, sometimes I feel it's easier to explain the non-cash transactions when using the business financial records. The non-cash transactions, we know because it's non-cash, you've got only two options. Either you're going to use your business journal or you're going to use your fees journal for non-cash. That's the two options. So if you've got, if you're busy with business, like debiting your fees, for example, that is a business exercise. It's got nothing to do with trust. Debiting your fees, that is what you do. That is your business. You are rendering legal services and you are collecting the legal services from your clients. That's what you do. That is your business. So part of your business is rendering, rendering legal services. And that is why if you want to record those services that the client owes you the money, you use a fees journal. That's non-cash. But let's look at the following example. This is a very good example of a cash transaction and a non-cash transaction on the business side of my financial records. Okay. If I go to Incredible Connections to buy a laptop for my business, I've got money in my bank account. I'm going to pay 20,000 Rand for this laptop. I go to Incredible Connections. I pay them. I buy the laptop cash. I pay them. 20,000 is flowing away out of my business bank account. That is a cash transaction. So I record that on the outflow side. It's business related. So it's business cash book. The money's flowing out of my business bank account. So what side? Credit side. 20,000 is flowing out. So I record the 20,000 on the outflow side, the credit side. The money's flowing out. And I post that entry to the debit side of the computer's business ledger. B goes with B. But look at the following scenario. I've got no money in my business bank account or I've got money in my business bank account, but it's end of the month. I must pay my rent. I must pay my salaries. 
I must pay my water and lights account for the business. I've got a lot of things to pay. So I cannot spend 20,000 Rand on a laptop. So I go to Incredible Connections and I enter into a credit agreement. I enter into a credit agreement with them. When you buy on credit, is there money flowing? No, that's the beauty of credit. You go, you sign a document, and you walk out of that store with your laptop in the box. You go back to your office, and no movement of money in your bank account. But unfortunately, come the end of the month, then you are going to pay your first installment. So that laptop is not going to cost you 20,000 anymore at the end of the day. It's going to cost you 25. But that is when you buy on credit. So only end of the month, money will move. But now, let's say it's the 15th of the month, I've got a laptop. I can go back to the office. I can work on that laptop. It's not taking any money out of my business account. Do you understand the difference between the two? One is where you buy the laptop for 20000 and you pay it. Then money is flowing out of your business account. The other example is where you buy the laptop on credit. That is a typical non-cash transaction. How will I now record this purchase of the laptop? How will I record the purchase of the laptop? I will use a journal. It's a business. I'm buying a laptop. It's, it's very obvious that this is a business transaction. So I go to my business financial records. First question, is money flowing out of my bank account? No, I'm not paying anything. I'm just signing on the dotted line. I'm buying on credit. So it's non-cash. So how will I record that? I need a book of prime entry for non-cash. And I've only got two options. Either a business journal, sometimes also referred to as a general journal, or a fees journal. But I'm not debiting fees. That's not what I'm doing. I'm buying on credit. So I'm going to use my business journal to record the non-cash transaction. Do you understand? When else will you use a business journal? When you write off depreciation on a fixed asset or where you write off bad debt where a client cannot pay you or where you charge a client interest on an overdue account. Client is not paying your account and you are charging interest from that client or where you correct a posting error. Now you recall on the trust journal, you can also, where you've incorrectly posted entries, use a journal to correct. We don't use Tipex. We use a journal. The journal is our Tipex. That's how you correct your mistake by using a journal. That is also a very good example of a non-cash transaction. So if you made a mistake in respect of your trust financial records, you use the trust journal to fix the mistake. If you made a mistake, a posting error, in respect of your business financial records, you use a business journal to fix the mistake. Okay, so you understand non-cash transactions, but then when you debit fees. So I've consulted with Mr. DeVore and he was sitting here in my office crying for two hours about his life and how sad he is, but I'm charging him I'm charging Mr. Divorce for the two-hour consultation. That's my business. I'm selling my knowledge, legal services, and I'm also selling my time. He took up two hours of my time. So I'm going to bill the client for the two hours. That is regarded as fees. How do we make an income out of fees? We call that fees income. The only other way that we can get an income is interest on a positive bank balance, for example. If I've got a positive bank balance of half a million rand in my business account, 
and I get interest from the bank. That can also be a form of an income. But our primary source of income will be debiting fees, raising fees. And that is a business exercise. That's how I collect fees. It's a business exercise. And whenever you see you debit a fee, even if it's a transfer fee, a summons fee, an instruction fee, collection commission, a judgment fee, a consultation fee, a letter of demand fee. When you see that word fee, you know immediately, what is my book of prime entry? A fees journal. Then you go to your fees journal, you record in your fees journal, and you post to the business ledger accounts. Because if you look, where do you find the fees journal? Under your business financial records. So again, with the cash book, you post to the ledger. From the cash book, you post to the ledger. The same with the journal. The business journal entries, debit and credit, must be posted to business ledger accounts. And the fees journal entries must be posted to the fees uh, to the business ledger accounts. Okay. Now, the only exception to this general rule where T goes with T and B goes with B. At the end of the month, remember I've explained to you now trust financial records and business financial records. Trust is this side, business other side. We're going to take a short break just now. Trust business. The only time where you will mix, and I always say no, you don't mix business with pleasure, and another rule in accounting, legal practitioners, accounts management, in, in general, you don't mix business with pleasure, but in legal practitioners, accounts management, you don't mix business with trust entries. They separate, except once a month, you will affect the transfer procedure. Transfer procedure. Transfer procedure. Sorry. The transfer procedure. That's the only time you mix trust entries with business entries. And you've got the two things. You've got the transfer journal as the non-cash step, where you will work with the same clients, TLA, and the same clients, BLA, in the same journal as the first step, the non-cash step. And then you've got the transfer, the physical transfer of money. And that's where you've got the trust cash book and the business cash book entries. That is the transfer procedure. It's the only time once a month at the end of the month where you can get your hands legitimately on trust money. And that is by affecting a trust transfer. Take some of the trust money that you are legitimately entitled to. Legitimately. You cannot get your hands on trust money. It's not your money. It's the client's money. But you can legitimately take some of the trust money by affecting a transfer procedure, a trust transfer procedure where you're going to work with your transfer journal. I always say a transfer journal is like a candidate legal practitioner. It is a special journal. You all are very special people. And that is why I refer to you as the transfer journals of the legal profession. 
because you as the transfer journal you are special you you obtain or you contain trust and business financial entries in the same journal and then when you've got the cash step where you physically move the money that's where you take out the money from the business bank account and you phys uh, sorry the trust bank account and you physically move it so if money goes out of the trust bank account it's a credit because remember in the trust cash book you show it as a credit outflows and then it's flowing into the business bank account so you record it as a debit in your business cash book flowing out of the one bank account flowing into the other so this is answering your question this is the only time money flows between the two bank accounts it's when you affect the trust transfer okay i don't want us to take a long break let's take a 10 minute break the lecture is scheduled until nine o'clock i still need to explain a few things to you but when we get back anything that you don't understand please ask me let's take a 10 minute break then we're going to come back and then i'm going to Look in my crystal ball and see if I can guide you in respect of what to expect in the admission exam. Uh, I presume that's why you are here. Is this a training session for the admission exam or the assessment exam? We don't refer it to admission. It's an assessment exam. Is that why you're here or are you training for something else? It's uh, PPV vocally training. Sorry? It's yeah, PVT it's... training. It's not admission exams. Oh, is it PVT training? No. I thought they already got their PVT training, the UNISA students. I, I got it from Mr. Pillay. It was to get them or to assist them further to get them ready for the assessment exam. Okay, but so, I might be... Our, our oh, first no, lecturer no, was an epic one. fail, so that's why we had to ask for new lecturers, and that is why this course was offered to us. Oh, every uh, people failed? The... No, the lecturer, uh, there was a lot of technical glitches, and oh, okay. a lot of students complained, so oh, okay, perfect. another lecturer. So this is just in... I'm just supplementing. I'm trying to get you on the road. You lost... You lost your way a bit, and I'm trying. Is this helping? Are you understanding? Are you following me? We are following. Thank you. Yes, we are. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, so sir. Just, I'm trying to, to break it down so that you can get the idea. No, I, I just wanted to know um, where we are going, um, or are you writing an exam, or are you planning to write the assessment exam in future, or are you planning to write in August? What's the idea? We are writing on Saturday. Oh, yes, you are writing on Saturday. That's right. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay, let's take a 10 minute break. 10 past eight. If you can be back at 10 past eight, then we will proceed. Thank you. Thank you, sir.
OK, Leslie. Vivi. Hello. Yes, Leslie. Yes. Uh, I'm saying uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. And then we are really enjoying that last we are seeing the bigger picture. Uh, most of us are left with only this uh, accounting or wet exams. But our main prize is to write the board exam in August. Any tips will be highly uh, be appreciated in the process. Yes. Okay, Leslie. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna look at the school exam, and we will we I'll put I'll I'll I'll, I'll give you some pointers in respect of the assessment exam as well. What to expect? Thank you yes. very much. Sir. Yes, Leslie. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, is it Leslie? Oh, okay. Then somebody else also put up their hand. I just see it's VB. I'm I'm trying to lower my hand now. <laughs> is Leslie? <laughs> okay, no, it's fine. Okay, if if you want to ask a question, you can just interrupt me. It's not an issue. If I miss your hand, then. Uh, Yes, I see there's VB. Sorry, sir. I was just going to say uh, that you are also here for the exam preparation. J sorry, you, you. it's very soft. Just say again, it's also. We, some of us are also here for the board exam. Oh, to um, get your. Okay, now I can hear you. Thank you very much. Okay, perfect. Yes, Karabu. So I was just asking, is it possible if you can just um, re-explain uh, the explanation of how the trust and the business comes together, this whole transfer procedure? I don't fully understand that. Yes, no, we're going to definitely, I'm going to look at the transfer procedure individually. First, I want to just quickly focus on the cash transactions and how to record. And then we're going to look at the transfer procedure exactly the steps you are going to follow. You've got five steps you are going to follow. Every time you must transfer money from trust to business, you follow those five steps, but I'll explain it to you. I'm going to spend some time on the transfer procedure. I just want you to now understand where it fits into the bigger scheme of things. It's yeah in the middle. That's all I need you to understand now. Anybody else? OK, let's just quickly. I just want to give you uh, some exercising in in what I've explained to you in respect of cash transactions and flow of money. OK, so I'm just going to make up as I go along. I'm just going to make up transactions. And then I want you to understand how we are going to record by using our different financial records. For now, I'm just going to focus on flow of money, cash transactions. Okay, so the cash transactions, the entries in the cash books, and then the posting to the ledgers. Now, what is very important in any exam that you will be writing? Remember, I said you keep trust financial records separate from business financial records. OK, so in the exam, I also want you to do that. I want you to open a trust cash book and please don't use TCB as the abbreviation. Because remember, write out trust cash book and business cash book. I've already explained to you that I've got the debit side as my inflow side and the credit side as my outflow side. Then you can use the page, half of the page in the exam for your trust cash book because most of your entries will go through the cash book the different cash books. Then you write trust 
ledger accounts because remember all those entries must be posted to your trust ledger accounts and yes are we supposed to see the whiteboard yes can you not see the whiteboard no we're not seeing it okay let me just stop here and then i'll share it again with you Can you see it now? Not yet. It says connected. Yes, it, I think it might be you on the network. I, I can see it from my side. Thank, Thank you. you. I can oh, see it too. Thank you for that. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So in the exam, doesn't matter, assessment exam, the school exam, there will be different transactions through the month. That's what we do as legal practitioners. We get all these different transactions and we need to apply the knowledge that I've just explained to you. But now I'm just going to focus on cash transactions. Forget about the non-cash transactions. Okay, so I, I group together my trust cash book and then I've got all my trust ledger accounts. Remember, a trust ledger is a book of secondary entry. So I've got all these trust ledger accounts. Okay, but I don't know the names, but for now, I'm just going to open them. Then let me open a few more. It's all these T accounts. And please use the full page when you open these T accounts. You've got the full page available. Use the full page don't open them next to each other. Then I've got my business cash book for all the inflows and outflows. Debit side, again, is the plus side. Credit side, the minus side. You recall, I said business cash book, debit side for inflows, credit for outflows. And then I'm going to group together all my business ledger accounts remember b goes with b and t goes with t okay now i'm going to show you how to use these books of prime entry and to post to the ledger accounts okay let's say for example number one we started our practice we started our practice I started my practice and I need a million rand to start this practice. I must buy computers, I must buy furniture, and I must pay a deposit for my office premises. I must also pay my first month's rent in advance. So I've got lots of things that I need to pay. I need money. Now, if you haven't got money, you go to a bank and you apply for a loan. But let's say my grandmother passed away and I inherited a million rand. So I've got a million rand in my personal bank account, my CJ's personal bank account. I'm going to go to the bank, FNB, and I'm going to open two bank accounts. You remember, I said we opened two bank accounts. CJ Attorney's Trust Account and CJ Attorney's Business Account. Now I've got two bank accounts. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to log on to my personal profile and I'm going to transfer a million rand into the business bank account from my own personal funds. The inheritance paid out into my personal bank account and I'm going to transfer that million rand into the newly established business bank account in the name of CJM Attorneys, CJ Mayring Attorneys. Okay. First question is money flowing? Yes. Money is flowing. 
Is that money flowing? Is that trust money? No, it's not trust money. Is it business money? Yes, it's business money because I'm transferring that million rand into the business account. It's my contribution, my capital contribution to the practice. The practice needs money. The practice owes nothing and owns nothing. Okay, so the practice needs money and I'm going to use my own personal funds. So what will be my book of prime entry? I need to decide trust. No. Business? Yes. Okay. Now I go to my business financial records. Is this a cash transaction? Is money flowing? Yes. It's, it's not a non-cash. It's a yes, cash is flowing. Is the cash flowing into the bank account or is the cash flowing out of the business bank account? It's flowing into the business bank account. So I go to my business cash book. What side is the inflow side? It's the debit side. You see, it's a plus on the debit side. Remember, we said happy side, debit side. Money's flowing to the business. Okay, it's not flowing away. So this is a capital payment. It's a capital contribution by CJM of a million rand. So it's flowing into the business bank account. That's why I record it on the debit side. It's flowing in. If you draw a statement, you'll see there's a million rand in the business account. B goes with B. So this debit entry must be posted. And because the book of prime entry is the cash book, business cash book, it must be posted to the opposite side of a business ledger. So the most difficult thing that you need to do now, you need to establish what is the name of the ledger, the business ledger. B goes with B. Okay. Please. Put yourself, Gloria. Put yourself on mute. Gloria. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Gloria. Just mute yourselves. Okay. So, this money must be posted. What's the name of the business ledger? It's the partner's capital account. It's the partner's capital or the practitioner's capital account. So every time the practitioner takes money from his personal funds and he pays it into the practice's business bank account, we are going to post to the opposite side, the credit side. So you see, you've got the debit entry in the business cash book. It shows that the money was flowing in. It's a capital contribution by C.J. Mayron. So the partner, C.J. Mayron, has got a capital account and the million rand is going to go to be posted. This is a posting to the credit side. And I write here X business cash book, or you can just write business cash book. That's where you will find the other entry. So it's a cross-reference. If I look at C.J. Mayron's capital account. Sorry, just right there. Capital account. If you look at the capital account of C.J. Mayron, on the credit side, it shows you all the contributions made by C.J. Mayron from his personal funds. Okay. Now, next. We pay our first month's rent. We pay our first month's rent, and that is 10,000 Rand that we pay. Payment of rent, is that from trust? No, definitely not. That is a business-related transaction. Is money flowing? 
Yes, it's flowing away. It's flowing away. Okay, go to your business cash book and you are going to pay your landlord. It's flowing away. Where do you record the outflows of money out of the business bank account? On the negative side, the outflow side. So we're paying the landlord our first month's rent of 10,000 rand. Record the outflow of the 10,000. Luckily, we've got a million rand, so it's flowing out. Credit must be posted to the debit side of a business ledger. Business cash book posted to business ledger. Okay, now let's open a business ledger. The name of this business ledger will be office office rent it's an expense account it's a business ledger and i'm writing x business cash book 10000 rand i post it to the debit side of the business ledger and the name of the business ledger i've decided the name of the business ledger is office rent Every month when I pay my 10,000 Rand to the landlord, I'm going to let the money flow out of the business bank account by doing a credit entry and posting it to my office rent account. So my office rent business ledger account is keeping record for me to see what I spend on office rent. Next, Mr. DeVos pays 100,000 Rand as a deposit, as a deposit in advance into our trust bank account to keep us covered for disbursements in his divorce case. Okay, is this trust money or business money? It's trust money. It's a deposit that is paying for his divorce case. Okay, money is flowing. Is it cash or non-cash? It's cash. Money is flowing. Is the money flowing into the trust bank account or out? It's flowing in. What side is my inflow? Again, debit side is my inflow. So I'm getting from Mr. Divorce, a deposit of 100,000. It's flowing into the trust bank account. What is my book of prime entry for a cash transaction? Trust cash book. What side is inflow? Debit side. Remember, you can only use the plus debit and the, credit, uh, the minus credit for your two cash books. That's it. Don't use the plus and the minus for anything else. Only your two cash books. You got it. Business cash book and trust cash book. It works exactly the same. Debit inflow, credit outflow. Okay, so Mr. Divorce paid us a deposit of 100,000 for his divorce case. T goes with T. So I must post from the trust cash book to the trust ledger account. Who paid the money? Mr. Divorce. So I'm going to open for Mr. Divorce a trust ledger account. And remember, because it's a cash transaction, I post to the opposite side. So the debit entry here in the trust cash book must be posted to the credit side of Mr. Divorce's trust ledger account. This is the book of secondary entry. So there I go. It's X trust cash book. He paid a deposit of 100,000. Now, if I look at Mr. Divorce's trust ledger account on the credit side, I can see that he's got 100,000 with us on trust not our money not our money it's trust money it's mr divorce's money if mr divorce reconciles with his spouse tomorrow then i'm going to give him back his money i'm not keeping his money i'm going to give it back to him okay 
Next, Mr. Purchaser is buying a townhouse in Pretoria for a million rand. He's buying a townhouse and he's paying a million rand into your trust account by using an EFT. You've provided him with the banking details. He pays a million rand. Okay, is this trust related or business? It's trust. So I go to my trust financial records. Is money flowing? Yes, it's flowing. Go uh -huh. to your cash book. Yes. Is money flowing? Yes, it's flowing. Is it flowing in or out? It's flowing in. It's flowing in. Okay. It's flowing in. So I'm going to record on the debit side of the trust cash book. So, Mr. Purchaser. Please just make sure you're on mute. In the bus. A million rand is flowing into the bank account. So I record this on the debit side. I record this on the debit side. I've received from Mr. Purchaser a payment or a deposit for the purchase price. So it's flowing into my bank account. So that's debit. I know that a trust ledger must be posted to a, a trust cash book entry must be posted to a trust ledger. T goes to T. So first you're recording the cash book. Now I'm going to post. Who paid this money? Mr. Purchaser paid us. So I open for Mr. Purchaser a trust ledger account and I post that entry. It's the purchase price that he paid of a million rand. I post it to the credit side of Mr. Purchaser's trust ledger account. Okay. Then let's say Mr. Trust instructed us to set up a trust, an inter vivos trust, a living trust on his behalf. And we ask him for a deposit of 20,000 Rand. It's a deposit. I must still draft the trust documents. He pays the 20,000. Is it trust? Yes, it's trust money. So I go to my trust financial records. Is money flowing? Yes. Is money flowing in or out? It's flowing into the trust bank account. Go to your trust cash book. What side is the inflow side? The debit side. So Mr. Trust paid us a deposit of 20,000. Okay, 20,000. T goes with T. So this entry must be posted to a trust ledger account. Whose trust ledger? Mr. Trust. So I'm going to open for Mr. Trust a trust ledger. You see, I keep all the client's trust money separately recorded in trust ledger accounts because I need to keep proper record of the client's money. So I can't throw it all to in, into the same account. Okay, now, Mr. Divorce, I drafted the particulars of claim. I've issued the summons and I presented the summons to the sheriff. The sheriff served the summons on the defendant and I received the sheriff's account for 2,000 Rand. So now I must pay. I must pay the sheriff. If you've got money on trust available, you pay from trust. Okay. First question, whenever you pay something on behalf of a client, ask yourself two questions. Is there money available? Let's check Mr. Divorce's trust ledger on the credit side. Is there money? Yes, 100,000. There's 100,000 rand. Okay, so we've got a yes to question one. Question two, what's the purpose of that 100,000? Why did Mr. Divorce pay in the 100,000? 
to cover us for disbursements. So can I pay from trust? Yes, I can. Okay, so this is trust related. Money is flowing. Money is flowing. Okay, so it's trust cash book. Go to your trust cash book. What side is the outflow side? Money is flowing away. It's flowing from the trust bank account to the sheriff. Okay, on behalf of Mr. Divorce. So that's credit. So I'm going to pay the sheriff on behalf of Mr. Divorce, 2,000 Rand. This entry, T goes with T. So this is trust cash book entry. It must be posted to a trust ledger account. Whose sheriff's account did we pay? We paid on behalf of Mr. Divorce. So the trust cash book entry on the credit side must be posted to the opposite side of Mr. Divorce's trust ledger account. Let's do that. So we post to the debit side. X trust cash book, we paid 2,000 Rand to the sheriff. Now Mr. Divorce has got 98,000 left. Can you see? Look at the credit side, it's got 100,000, but we've spent 2,000 already of the available 100,000. So if you look at the balance available on the credit side, it leaves you with 98,000. Okay. Mr. Company instructed us to set up a company on his behalf. Mr. Company instructed us to set up a company on his behalf. And because he's been a client of our firm for many years, we did not ask for a deposit or we asked for a deposit of 10,000, but we have not yet received the deposit. Now I must pay the registrar of companies 2,000 Rand, no, let's say um, 5,000 Rand registration fees. I must now pay the registrar of companies, Cypro. I must pay 5,000 Rand to Cypro. Okay, now, first question, if you've got to pay something on behalf of a client, ask yourself, is there money available? Now, Mr. Company, if you look at Mr. Company's trust ledger, look at the credit side. There's a full zero available. We asked for a 10,000, but we haven't received the 10,000 deposit yet. So, where will you pay from? Where will you pay the 5,000 Rand from? I will pay it from business. So, this is a business related transaction. I've got no money on trust. I cannot use Mr. Divorce's money. I cannot use Mr. Purchase's purchase price of his property. I cannot use Mr. Trust's money because I'm going to need that to set up his trust. So, I cannot use other clients' money to pay disbursements on behalf of Mr. Company. So what will I do now? I must pay the registrar of companies, so I will need to pay from business. When money is flowing out of the business account, I go to the business cash book. And what is the outflow side? The credit side. So I'm paying CIPC. And I'm paying on behalf of Mr. Company 5,000 Rand. Mr. Company now owes me the money. So business cash book must be posted to a business ledger account. On whose behalf did I pay? Mr. Company's behalf. So I'm going to open for Mr. Company a business ledger account. Yeah, I've paid out on the credit side. I need to post that to the debit side of whose business ledger? Mr. Company. So I'm going to go to Mr. Company's business ledger and I'm going to record, yeah, the 5,000 Rand 
that I paid on his behalf. Okay, what you need to understand that for each and every client in your financial records, in your ledgers, there will be a business ledger and a trust ledger. Look there, Mr. Company has got a business ledger and Mr. Company has got a trust ledger. His trust ledger has got no money in it, but he's still got a trust ledger. So this is why attorneys bookkeeping and accounts management are so unique because we are actually running two sets of financial records simultaneously. It's not like a normal business. If you were running a shoe store, there would have just been a business account with business ledger accounts, with a business journal and a sales journal. That's what they will be. But because we are legal practitioners and we are entrusted with other people's money, we are keeping two sets of financial records, business financial records and trust financial records. And we never mix the two. We always ask ourselves first, is this trust related or business related? If it's trust related, I go to the trust financial records. If it's business related, I go to the business financial records. Okay. So sometimes, for example, Mr. Company, I couldn't pay the registrar of companies from the trust account because for this specific client, Mr. Company, if you look, you always look at a client's trust ledger account on the credit side. A client's trust ledger account, there will always be either a zero balance or a credit balance. It will always be on the credit side. The trust ledger to show if this client has got money with you. Okay. But this client, if I look at the credit side, it's got a zero balance. Then I pay from business. I've already explained that in the business cash book. You'll see we paid. And I post that to Mr. Company's business ledger account. Now it's on the debit side. Mr. Company is now a business debtor. He owes us. He owes me 5,000 rand. I paid the registration fees on his behalf. He owes me 5,000. So on trust, I owe him money because he's a trust creditor, but he's got no money on trust. If you look at all my other trust creditors, if you look at all my other trust creditors, yeah, Mr. Divorce is a trust creditor. It's got a 98,000 credit balance. So I've got 98,000 of his money. If he wants his money, I'm going to give it back to him. Mr. Purchaser is a trust creditor. It's got a credit balance of a million rand. If the transaction is canceled, I'm giving back his million rand. Mr. Trust is a trust creditor. I'm a set up a trust, he paid a 20,000 rand deposit. Maybe he might have a change of heart and instructs me to stop the registration process, then I'll pay back the balance. And Mr. Company has got no money with us, so he's currently not a trust creditor. But a client can also be a business debtor where he owes us money for fees or disbursements that we've paid on his behalf. If we've got money available on trust and we must pay a disbursement, I'm not going to pay it from my business account. I need my own money to pay my salaries and my office rent. So then I'll pay from trust. But if I've got no money available on trust, then I'm left with no alternative than to pay from the business account. Okay, next I go to Incredible Connections and I buy a computer for 20,000 Rand cash. Okay, is that trust related or business? It's business related. Is money flowing? Yes, it's flowing. Is it flowing in or out? It's flowing away. It's flowing away. So I go to my business cash book. What is my away side, outflow side? Credit. So 
I'm paying incredible connections, 20,000 Rand for the purchase of a computer. I'm buying a computer for 20,000. I've got money. I've put in a million Rand of my own funds. So I'm buying this computer cash. I'm not going to pay interest on a credit agreement. I'm buying it cash. B goes with B. So that cash entry must be posted to a business ledger account. What did I buy? I bought a computer. So I'm opening a business ledger account called Computers. And I'm going to post that entry from this. Office rent is an expense account. Computers, that is an asset. Mr. Company, business ledger, it's an asset. Partners capital count is a liability. Okay, so all ledger accounts, business ledger accounts, can be classified into six categories. Six categories. All these business ledger accounts can be classified into six categories. It's either a capital account, where you record all the capital contributions made by the practitioner or practitioners, or it can be a drawings account, any money taken by the practitioner for his personal use, or it can be an expense account. Now, in, in practicing as a legal practitioner, you will incur expenses, office rent, stationery, entertainment, where you entertain your clients, um, salaries, all of that will be expense business ledger accounts. Then also we've got assets. That's where the clients owe us money or we've got office furniture. The law library is an asset. The firm vehicle, if we bought a firm vehicle to travel to court and back, that is an asset. Computers will be an asset. Furniture and equipment will be assets. So there will be a business ledger account with that name, for example, computers. And every time I buy computers, I post it to the business ledger account called computers, and that's classified as an asset. Okay, so X business cash book I bought from Incredible Connections, a computer for 20,000. Okay, so I posted from the book of prime entry, the cash book to the computer's business ledger account. It shows me that I've got an asset called computers to the value of 20,000. The other two classifications will be an income, an income, and that will be your fees business ledger account, as well as interest received business ledger account. And the last one will be a liability there you've got one already the capital account but don't classify that's where you bought on credit the next computer if we buy it on credit it's a non-cash and if we finance it through the computer um, uh, incredible connections incredible connections becomes a business creditor so it means that we owe them money yes Gideon. Thank you, sir. Uh, under the fees uh, account, uh, you said uh, uh, interest is also added under that category, or do you have a separate one for interest? No, there's a separate business ledger account with the name interest received. So fees okay. will be a separate one and interest received will be a separate one. Thank you, sir. Okay. So let's, let me explain. Let's say the bank pays us now interest on the positive balance in the bank account, our business bank account. The bank pays us 3,000 Rand interest. 
Is money flowing? Yes, money is flowing. Is it business? Yes, it's because I've got a, a million rand. Well, the balance of a million rand in my business account, I'm getting interest on the positive balance in the bank account. The bank is paying me 3,000 rand. Okay, so it's cash. Money is flowing. It's business money. Is it flowing in or out? I'm getting 3,000. So I record on the debit side. Interest. Received on the positive balance, I'm getting 3,000 Rand from the bank on the positive balance. Okay, that must be posted to a business ledger account. This is not fees, but it's an income. It's interest received. So I'm going to open a business ledger account because B goes with B, and the name of that ledger account will be interest received. It's a business ledger account, and this can be classified as an income. And I'm going to post the 3,000 Rand to this business ledger account on the credit side. X business cash book. I received 3,000 Rand interest on a positive bank balance. Sorry, let me just write this properly. Interest, interest received. Okay, but the bank is also charging me 400 Rand for the facility, for the business bank account facility. So it's bank charges. You know, if you've got a bank account with the bank, the bank is going to charge you a fee, bank costs. Okay, they're charging us 400 Rand. Is, money, is it cash? Yes, it's money flowing. Is that money business related? Yes, it's the bank charges in respect of my business account. Is the money flowing to me? No, interest that was flowing to me, but the money is flowing away from me. So I record in the business cash book the money flowing away. So that's on the credit side. Bank charges. They're charging me 400 Rand. So I record that. Bank charges. They're charging me 400 Rand. Okay. So there it's flowing away. Business cash book must be posted to business ledger as the book of secondary entry. Credit must be posted to the debit side. So I'm going to open a new business led ledger account and it's going to be bank charges. I want to keep record of all the bank charges. That was a credit, so I posted to the debit side, and this again is an expense account. X business cash book, I record the 400 Rand on the credit side. So do you get an idea of cash transactions? Always ask yourself, is this trust related? Or business related. If it's trust, ask yourself, is this a cash transaction? Is money flowing? If it's yes, your cash book will be your book of prime entry, your trust cash book, and you're going to post to a trust ledger. If it's business related, ask yourself, is money flowing in or out of the bank account? If it's yes, your book of prime entry is business cash book. Record either as in or out post to a business ledger account to the opposite side. Do you get the idea of how it works? Okay, let's see if we can do maybe a few more. It's, we're running out of time. Um, let's say, for example, now, Mr. Purchaser, you rendered your statement of account to Mr. Purchaser. You've rendered your statement of account for the transfer costs. The transfer costs are made up out of your transfer fees and transfer duty. What is transfer duty? When you buy a property for a million rand or over a million rand, you pay transfer duty. So let's assume, I know I said the purchase price is a million rand, but let's assume that we're charging the client for the transfer fees 
10,000 Rand and transfer duty 20,000. So it's a 30,000. After we've drafted the transfer documents, Mr. Purchaser will come to our offices and Mr. Seller and they will sign the transfer documents. When Mr. Purchaser signs the transfer documents, we are going to render a pro forma statement of account. It's not a final statement of account. It's not an invoice. When will you be entitled to your transfer fees? Only on date of registration. That's when you completed your mandate. If I must transfer a property, I cannot a month before I completed my mandate decide, you know what, I'm running short on cash or money in the business account. Let me take the transfer fees. That is not allowed because you must first complete the mandate and you must actually render the service. If you consult with a client, you can debit the fee in the fees journal. But the transfer process will only be completed on date of registration when the transaction is registered in the deeds office. And that's when you are entitled to your fees. Also, transfer duty, you must first collect the transfer duty from the purchaser. Then you pay it over to SARS. Then SARS will issue you with a transfer duty receipt. It is a proof that you've paid the transfer duty. And that is one of the documents that you must submit with all your other transfer documents at the deeds office to be able to affect transfer of an immovable property. So you understand why I do a pro forma account. I just do it there. Mr. Purchaser, I'm going to charge you 10,000 Rand for the transfer and I'm going to charge and 20,000 Rand that must go to the receiver. You must pay me 30,000 Rand. Mr. Purchaser now pays you the 30,000. He pays you. Is this trust or business? It's still trust money. He's paying in advance the 30,000. I haven't paid the receiver on his behalf, so he doesn't owe me the money. I'm not entitled to 10,000 Rand transfer fees because that's only on date of registration that I will be entitled to 10,000. So that is still trust money. So I record in my trust financial records. Is this cash? Is money flowing? Yes, money is flowing. So it's trust cash book. Is money flowing to me into the bank account or out? It's flowing in. So I record the 30,000 payment by Mr. Purchaser of the pro forma costs. He's paying now costs of 30,000. T goes with T. So I must post that entry to the trust ledger account. Who paid the money? Mr. Purchaser. So I've already got for Mr. Purchaser a trust ledger account. You're not going to open for each and every entry a separate trust ledger. You've got already for Mr. Purchaser a trust ledger. So I'm going to post the debit entry in the trust cash book to the credit side of Mr. Purchaser's trust ledger. X trust cash book, he paid the costs of 30,000. Now I've got the 30,000 in my trust account. The next day I pay the receiver of revenue 20,000 Rand to enable me to obtain the transfer duty receipt because I need it. I must submit that document at the deeds office. Okay, so I pay the receiver of revenue who on behalf of Mr. Purchaser. So Mr. Purchaser must pay the costs. That includes the transfer fees as well as the transfer duty. Can I pay from trust? Yes, I can. Look there, you've got 30,000 available. You've got 30,000 available. Now, let's quickly take a step back. You've got a million available as well. Can you use the million rand to pay the receiver? No, you can't. Why not? What's the purpose of the payment of the million rand? That was a part payment of the purchase price. Can you just think what Mr. Seller will do if you use 
the purchase price to pay disbursements. So that is an example where you cannot touch the million rand to pay the receiver. But I've got 30,000 rand available for Mr. Purchaser. So I can pay from trust. Let's go and pay. My book of prime entry is the trust cash book. Is money flowing to me or is it flowing away? It's flowing away. It's flowing to the receiver of revenue. On behalf of Mr. Purchaser, I'm paying 20,000 Rand transfer duty to the receiver of revenue. It's flowing away. T must be posted to a trust ledger account. Trust cash book to trust ledger. On whose behalf did I pay? I paid on Mr. Purchaser's behalf. So go and post that to the debit side of Mr. Purchaser's trust ledger. X trust cash book 20,000 on the debit side. So it means that of the 30,000 that he paid, I've now spent 20,000 to obtain the transfer duty receipt. Something else that you also need to take uh, cognizance of is the fact that there's another document that you are going to need to obtain for a transfer. And that is a rates clearance certificate. Who's responsible for the payment of the rates clearance certificate? The seller is responsible for the payment. Let's say, for example, I got the figures from the municipality. A rates clearance certificate is to show that all rates and taxes will be paid up to date and are paid up to date of transfer. Now the seller must pay the rates clearance figures. I got the rates clearance figures, it's 12,000 Rand. I asked Mr. Seller to pay the 12,000. He informs me that he's got no money, he cannot pay it. I must pay the municipality. So Mr. Seller has got no money, so I cannot pay the 12,000 Rand from trust. I would have preferred if Mr. Seller paid me the 12 and then I would have paid it to the municipality. But now he's got no money. Where will I pay from? I'm going to help Mr. Seller. I'm going to pay it from business. I'm going to my business cash book. Money is flowing. It's flowing away. It's flowing away to the municipality. So I record on the credit side. It's to the municipality that I'm paying on behalf of Mr. Seller, 12,000 Rand. B goes with B. So business cash book must be posted to a business ledger account. On whose behalf did I pay the 12,000? Mr. Seller's behalf. So now I'm going to open for Mr. Seller a business ledger account. And I'm going to record the 12,000 payment on the debit side. I'm posting it from the business cash book, X business cash book. He now owes me 12,000, but I know I'm going to transfer his property and I'm going to, that million rand is already with me in trust. So when I move it to his trust ledger, I'm going to take my money. So I'm not too worried. I'm just helping this client in the meantime but he owes me 12,000 Rand. Okay, then you pay your salaries, 40,000 Rand. Is this trust or business? It's business. Is money flowing? Yes, money is flowing. So go to your business cash book. Is it flowing to you or away from you? It's flowing away. So I'm paying salaries, 40,000. It's flowing away. B goes with B. I must post it to my salary business ledger account. Credit must be posted to the debit side. Okay, go open a business ledger account called salaries business ledger. Post to the debit side. X business cash book, 40,000. I've spent 40,000 on salaries. I'm keeping record in my salaries business ledger account of all the payments in respect of salaries. Okay, time is up. We've wasted a lot of time with the connectivity issues, but 
tomorrow we're gonna we're gonna just proceed where we stop tonight okay please look at this you must be comfortable with your two bank accounts money flowing in out in out in out cash book entry trust cash book posted to trust ledgers business cash book posted to business ledgers tomorrow i'm going to look at non-cash transactions and journals and i want to look at investments and i want to look at trust transfers i want to look at conveyancing matters and correspondent transactions okay for keel okay uh, just one quick question what does this x uh, mean because i understand everything it's just for my you know when i'm picturing it in the bind you don't need to write the, the, the x, x. You, can, you can just write bcb but i write it's exiting it's exiting coming okay. from it's exiting no, 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 it's fine. Cash. do you understand thank you so much it it's makes coming. my voice it's going <laughs> out there you. It's, you know the exit <laughs> it's exit. Exit. Oh, okay no, thank you so much but you thank don't need you. To, you can just write there bcb or tcb is this all making is it making sense am i making yeah. sense it's brilliant. I wish you could continue for another 15 minutes or so because we're really enjoying this and it's informative. It's starting to make sense now. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Okay, guys. Um, sorry, sir. Yes. Sorry, sir. Uh, yes. Can you please uh, request Zukuiswa uh, to upload this early tomorrow morning so that we can just prepare uh, for tomorrow night okay. should we have any questions please okay uh, tasha are you still with thank us thank you tasha mr Myron. wow i must say i hope you also learning a lot <laughs> will you be able to <laughs> share this <laughs> are you okay are you are you yeah. will you be able to share it with them uh, early tomorrow morning I will do that, yes. I just don't have access to the first part, but I'll put the second oh, okay. part up, and then as soon as Zuki sends me the first part, I'll put that up, but it will be after eight. Okay, thank you. You're a star. And again, I'm so thankful for all your assistance today. I don't know. You see, we can't do it without a whiteboard, and we can't do it without um, being able to share our screens. So hopefully by tomorrow, but I will log on half an hour before the time just to make sure that we are up and running. And I'll I'll have you on standby, Tasha. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. That's fine. Okay, it's guys. See you thank tomorrow. You. See you. Enjoy your thank evening. Thank you, sir. Stay warm and stay thank safe. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Okay.